1988, I was accused of a crime, convicted in 1990, I believe, of a murder and a rape that I didn't commit. Served 12 years in the Texas prison on a life sentence before I was um, exonerated through DNA evidence and through the real perpetrators, the real murderers' confession. When I was first brought in for questioning by the Boston Police Department on this murder and rape, um, they told me they wanted, they, they came up to the Pizza Hut and they said they want to talk to me about uh, burglary. And I said, sure. And I went with them and they drove me to the police station and when they, um, when they were driving me, I, I had never been in prison before so I, or in trouble or any kind of trouble. I've been to Mr. Straight A. I was brought up to, you know, trust the police officers over there to uh, protect me or you know, not to hurt me. So I answered the questions as much as I could, well, what I knew, but I knew nothing about this murder and the rape. But they took it as a sign that I was covering up something and they kept on saying that I had something to do with it, I'm just lying, I'm not being truthful. And this went on and on for like several hours. Till the, and then this came with threats that if I didn't cooperate, I didn't tell them the truth, I was gonna go to death row because it was a capital murder and I was gonna die on death row. And ultimately, after many hours of interrogation and threats, I, I just was wore down and I told them what they wanted to hear. I was in jail for a while, my mom got sick. They were calling my mom and telling her that if I, if I didn't cooperate, I was gonna die in prison. I was gonna, I was gonna get, uh, not die in prison, but uh, get the lethal injection. You don't want your son to die. Just basically threaten her. And she would call me and tell me, you need to confess. You need to, but not confess, I'll plead guilty. And I said, I'm not gonna plead guilty. I didn't do this, I didn't do this. I don't know. But eventually she got like a stroke or something, just cause of all stress. And when I heard that, I just, uh, tears in my eyes, I just, that was the hardest decision. People think that it was, it was so easy for me to make this decision, but it was the hardest decision I had to make. I remember calling whoever I had to call, and like, I know what I was doing, I don't, didn't want to, but I don't want my mom to suffer anymore. False confessions have been happening through a lot more than people think. People, every, I've gone around the country, and I've talked to a lot of people, and they ask me about why would somebody confess People just don't confess to something they don't do. There's no such thing. And they're just, they're not, they're uneducated that it, it, it has happened, it does happen. And false confessions will continue to happen unless they get the videotaping of interrogations. My uh, interrogation, myself, I was, it was not video recorded. They didn't have, well, not too many people doing that. They did some audio recording of some statements, the ones, that there was one audio recording that they, I was getting the facts wrong so they would stop and start the tape until I got it right. Obviously, they, they destroyed that tape. There's nowhere to be found. The one that didn't have the many mistakes is around, but the, the, the one, the real, the real, the audio tape that would have uh, probably, uh, you know, discredited the confession is gone. I was ex ultimately exonerated on the, gen the t 16th of January, 2001. Every exoneree, all we want is to have our own f our family, kids, and be normal, be a productive member of society, not looked at as this exception.